Santa is going to be reading How the Grinch Stole Christmas. So before I read this book, normally when I read these books, I have some of you helping me to turn the pages. So I'm going to have to take off my gloves because it's pretty hard to turn the pages with my gloves on. So I'll take my gloves off. And I'm going to read How the Grinch Stole Christmas. So glad that I can read for you kids today. How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch had hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that mostly the likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town, for he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled with his grinch fingers, nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas for coming. For tomorrow, he knew all the who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated, the noise, 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 noise. You can see that, how much noise and all the goings on in Whoville. All right. Then, who's young and old would sit down to feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on who pudding, a rare who roast beast, which is something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. There they are, getting ready to sit down and have a huge feast. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with their Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd Sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this who Christmas thing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years, I've put up for it now. I must stop Christmas from coming. But how? There's all, everybody in Whoville singing and holding hands. Ah, then the Grinch got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea idea. I know what just to do, the Grinch laughed at his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and he clucked. What a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like St. Nick. I need a reindeer, the Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max, and he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn to the top of his head. Look at what the Grinch is doing. That doesn't look like a reindeer to me. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks. On a ram's shackle sleigh, he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, giddy up, and the sleigh started down toward the homes where the who lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark. Quiet snow filled the air. All the who's were all dreaming, sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claus hissed, and he climbed to the roof. Empty bags in his fist. There he is, up on the roof with an empty bag. And then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, and so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace blue where the little who stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Look at all the stockings, and he's in the fireplace, and all the kids are asleep in their bed. 
Then he slithered and slunk, with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room he, he went and took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. He stuffed them all in his bags, then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags, one by one, up the chimbley. Then he sunk to the icebox. He took the hose who's feast. He took the who pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of who hash. Here's the Grinch into the refrigerator, and he's having his way with everything in there. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee, and now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up that tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree, and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dug. He turned around fast, and he saw a small who. Why, it was little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny, this tiny who daughter who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? There he is, caught in the action, trying to get the Christmas tree up the fireplace chimney. But you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought up a lie, and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head, and he got her a drink and sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went up the chimney to stuff the tree up. Then the last thing he took was that log for their fire. And he went up the chimney himself, that old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire, and one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for the mouse. Everything is gone. There goes out who with everything up the chimney. <clears throat> then he did the same thing to the other who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other who's mouses. It was quarter past done. All the who's still in bed. All the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel, the trimmings, all the trappings. There he goes, off with all their presents in his sleigh. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Cruppet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo-poo to the Who's was a Grinchishly humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know what just to do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the Who's down in Whoville will all cry, Boo-hoo. Look at that. Getting ready to dump everything over the peak of the mountain. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound was merry. It couldn't be so, but it was. Merry, very. He started down at the Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes, then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, were, they were singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. There they are, hand in hand, singing. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought. Doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And then what happened then? Well, in the Whoville, they say, that the Grinch's small heart 
grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beef. There he is, heading down with his sleigh. And, of course, the Grinch is going to carve that roast beef. Let me get that picture out here for you so you can see him carving that roast beef. There's the Grinch carving the roast beef. And that's the end of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Merry Christmas from the North Pole. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho.